People need experiences to change their identities and people always want to confirm with either the identity they are by projecting against what they see or by agreeing with it on the timeline. So long story short, content is an extremely powerful tool uh, to, to once again, help frame people the right way for when you make a call to actions, increase the probability of the sale. Welcome you guys uh, on Cyber Monday here. It's a huge, huge day. Uh, hopefully you guys have you had a great sales day. I know that uh, I had a really great Black Friday uh, sale uh, happening, uh, and uh, so did uh, so did Isaac. How did how did you guys uh, uh, how did you guys do? We we more than doubled up on our sales from last year, and uh, and so it was fantastic. We're we're, we're almost twenty percent sold out on this Vegas event already as well. So the, it, it's it's been a great a great weekend. People getting a lot of really good deals. I'd say. How about you, Jeremy? Pretty fantastic. Myself, I did great in my personal brand. I actually have some clients in my information product agency that they just flat out don't do Black Friday sales. They, they project their values on the market that they don't do discounts. So they hold themselves to higher levels. I had two people that crushed it. They actually did uh, about 3x what they do uh, in a week, just in a day, um, without even really having to dip the product too much. We just This year, instead of dipping prices, we just added more products to things, made the offers more valuable. It was cool. Awesome. Very, very One cool. thing I forgot here is I, I forgot to introduce you guys for the everybody that doesn't know who you are already. Um, uh, so you guys all know who I am. Uh, uh, we'll start in the top right box is uh, Eric Dick. I uh, runs uh, iStack Training, uh, which would be all the uh, e-commerce mastery live events, Facebook mastery live events, and that uh, he usually also MCs all the uh, affiliate world conferences. Um, so you've seen him on stage plenty. Um, uh, if you saw our last live stream, you know that, uh, and you see in the little the little box down there right there. Uh, that uh, uh, iStack Training and uh, AdLeaks have teamed up to bring you um, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live in Las Vegas, uh, January 9th through the 10th. Uh, oh yeah, it's already 20% sold out, and, and that was it's only been announced three days ago. Okay, uh, so you need to get your tickets right now. Uh, the price goes up tomorrow to 6.99. Right now, it's 4.99. So you need to get it today. Otherwise, the price will go up. And don't come to me next week asking for a discount code or anything like that. Um, uh, Eric Dick's been in the industry now for, I think, 13 or 14 years. Uh, uh, for those of you guys in the affiliate industry, I think uh, you might know uh, he worked for NeverBlue uh, way back in the day. Uh, while I had my affiliate network also, so we both kind of came from the affiliate world there, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, uh, last but not, certainly not least here, we have Jeremy Haynes, the man, the legend here uh, in, the, in the bottom... We're backwards here. Hey. The other guy. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> I think you got uh, and, uh, it. I had the pleasure to speak at Jeremy's uh, Internet Earners Summit event uh, maybe six months ago now, something like that. In, uh, in he was in July. Uh, and uh, he put on a really, really stellar event. Uh, and I got to see uh, Jeremy speak as well, which was really cool. And uh, so we had to have him come speak at uh, Facebook and e-commerce Mastery Live. So when you guys come, you're going to get to see Jeremy speak. Uh, Jeremy uh, has, has run millions and millions and millions of dollars of ads, uh, a lot of uh, info products especially. Uh, if you guys have ever seen uh, Dan Locke, uh, the, uh, the Asian guru, uh, uh, who has very, very unique, uh, very unique ads. Uh, you can thank Jeremy for that. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, uh, Jeremy, tell us a little bit more about your, uh, your background too. Yeah, so I used to work for Grant Cardone back in the day uh, before I got started with my agency for 13 months. Came into a business that was doing 40K a month in digital, doing about 1.3 million a month in contract values with the sales guys over the phone. Uh, just I was 20 years old, just started doing a bunch of digital marketing actions, Facebook ads, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, all, all kinds of cool stuff. And long story short, we ended up vamping up to $1.8 million a month on average over the 13 months with a big team effort. And I just didn't want to get paid 10K anymore. I wanted to expand like all these other people I was seeing that... Uh, you know, eventually became my mentors and people I worked with. So I started my agency, uh, pretty much gone from big personality brand to big personality brand, built up a nice business that operates in Miami Beach and Beverly Hills, and we just sell information products. At this point, about three years in, and we've done over $80 million in intangible and tangible information product returns. So it's pretty cool. We spend about a million a month now, and that's a fun time, all intangible stuff. So books, audio courses, uh, video courses, events, and I practice what I preach myself, so I do all that cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very cool. So you you got your uh, course as well that you've uh, created. You were telling me a little bit about it before the break. Tell me tell me what the the focus is with it. Yeah. So I, I have two two programs. One, I teach people how to start and scale a digital marketing agency and just level digital marketing skills. So I ended up teaching in three different Ty Lopez programs over the last three years. 
uh, he actually hired me as a consultant in my agency to come in and train his sales guys on how to sell more with all the data that they had. That just got a ton of people flooding me with questions, asking me things about my agency, about what I was doing, and about everything that I was doing, how to market, how to get results. So I just started, like I said, practicing what I preach, put, put together information products, not necessarily for the profit, but just for the, the flood of questions I was getting. Um, that's one of the best pr uh, practical ways that you can duplicate yourself so you don't have to answer the same thing again and again and again if you put it into a course and answer it in an in-depth way that uh, you know gets other people results. So that's, that's what I did. Got about 1,600 people in the community now. Uh, just broke that number the other day and you know still still growing very cool we were having a really interesting talk about content before and i think this is this kind of leads into what you're going to be talking about in vegas a little bit which is sort of what are what are the you know you, facebook ads are a powerful tool you can do incredible things with them. you can build audiences uh but if you don't have the content right if you don't have an engaging message you're not engaging people in the right way in the right order it's not going to work as well so talk a little bit about your mindset how it starts you know as it relates to the content and, and where you start with it yeah, so a lot of clients that I've worked with in the past and just what I've been able to apply into digital marketing has been psychology principles, uh, studying the old school mentors like Eugene Schwartz, um, implementing these things that a lot of people don't talk about nowadays because a lot of people don't understand them. When I started hearing uh, Ty back in the day and, and then diving into Charlie Munger talk about cognitive biases, um, I started just trying to apply these things into digital marketing. And <laughs> one of the most interesting things I found is when selling information products, and working with Grant, uh, what he would tell me and, and what he would preach to the world is omnipresence. So I had to figure out a way to digitize a sales process, be around somebody we were trying to sell in a way that wasn't annoying because I didn't want to be one of the, the, I call them the dick pill ads, which are you know, constantly the same ad in front of you, direct response ads, uh, just the same thing again and again and again and again. So I wanted to avoid being the digital clipboard salesperson. I wanted to contextually sell and I wanted to do that in a way without being ignored. You know, one of the biggest one of the biggest principles of psychology, when somebody's conditioned to ignore an ad, you wouldn't want to try to present your message in the form of an ad because it wouldn't work. So uh, Facebook and Instagram, they gave us these tools first over, before all the other platforms did to distribute your content. And the initial objectives I would use right inside of the ads managers, a practical tip, we would run engagement campaigns. And then eventually, you know, in the most recent times, we run video view objectives as well, optimized for through play. And long story short, if you go into the audience section, we, you find that besides just customer lists that you can upload, uh, besides just retargeting our website traffic, which continued to, to go down in our probability to actually retarget people from ad blockers and from, from you know, people just not wanting to be retargeted, uh, content was the way to go. We decided to play into the bias of these platforms, which if you think about it, they want you to keep people on their platforms engaged and they give you the tools to retarget people. So I took the logic of what an email list is and I, I just brought it into Facebook. I said, you know, you know what? Uh, I'm a marketing automation guy. I, I believe in segmenting databases and then, you know, sending people contextual emails and that drives a lot of sales. Why, why not digitize that, be omnipresent and handle the beliefs of the people that we're trying to sell so they can be framed the right way to buy our products when we do make our direct response ads. Uh, eventually, I, I called this concept uh, the actual method, the Venus flytrap method. Uh, I, I, I try to avoid being a digital clipboard salesperson. I try to avoid at all costs and any product I find this works, e-commerce and information products, to just be the pitch man. I don't want to just be there saying, hey, sign up for my webinar, sign up for my free PDF, you know, go download my, my fucking master class or even worse, the people just say, go, go sign up for the course. Um, I, I believe in respecting people in the sales process, which is what content, what content can do. And then on top of that, the tactical side of it, the platforms give us the ability to add people to lists to later retarget with our direct response ads. So I found that I could spend less money when I would actually make my call to actions. I'd have, meaning I'd have cheaper CPAs and I'd have a lower budget level. Uh, in addition to that, people would be more responsive. So I'd avoid negative feedback. I'd have ads that would you know, run evergreen for years, depending on the ad. Um, have a few examples with Dan Locke as great uh, you know, visual aids I can reference here. In addition to that, I just found that we would get a higher retention of customers for life buying more product from the people that we were selling from due to the fact that we were just respecting people in the sales process. We were letting them get to know us and then we would make our call to action. So it became extremely effective. Um, and, and you know, there's a lot of rabbit holes we can go down, but I'll leave that for your questions. That's super interesting. So you talk about respecting the customer and you're, you're doing that through, through content essentially, right? Through, through providing them with valuable content that, that may not have the cell built into it at that time. Is that, is that what you would say? Agree? Correct. Yeah. Cause, cause like a helicopter, right? It, you know, this happens to me every single time I go on a plane and I'm looking out the window or even once a month nowadays, I, I 
want to get in a helicopter and I want to see it from above, right? I'm here in my penthouse in Miami and I, I love the view that I can have from above because it's the same thing you want to have in your marketing efforts. Most people, they think direct response ad, that's, that's like living life through a first person perspective. Okay. When you take yourself out and you look at the overall process, if I start with a piece of content and I create a sequence of two to three videos that I want people to go through before they see my call to actions and my conversion campaigns, well, it's quite simple to do when you're looking at it from above. You know, because if you're if you're running a piece of content towards a cold audience, you're accumulating people into your list that you can retarget with your direct response ads for a penny to two pennies tops. You know, if I, if I could screen share here, I'd show you my uh, my hundredth of a penny, my two hundredth of a penny cost per engagements or cost per video views. And my point being, that's when we then manage the perspective of the person with more content. So every piece of content that is is posted on your page is strategically posted for two different reasons. Uh, to manage the future objections the person will have when you make your call to actions before they become objection and to manage the belief system and the overall way that people are going to view the opportunity to join in. In my case, it's always biz opportunities or information products or expanding their awareness in a particular area. But for e-com, it's the same thing. If I can make people aware of their problem, how they need to see the world, how seeing the world that they're the way they're currently viewing, it could be wrong or that they could, sh they could shift that or other people like them have shifted it and then give them that opportunity to shift. Um, it's all kinds of cool psychological opportunities uh, to leverage into your Facebook advertising. People need experiences to change their identities and people always want to confirm with either the identity they are by projecting against what they see or by agreeing with it on the timeline. So long story short, content is an extremely powerful tool uh, to, to once again, help frame people the right way for when you make a call to actions to increase the probability of the sale. Uh, so, so it works through and through all kinds of industries. <laughs> very, very interesting. So just talking practically about, about layering experiences like that, I think that's, I think that's super interesting. It can be done easily through retargeting essentially where you show someone offer and then you sort of retarget them right away. But you're probably talking about a bit more of, a, of an inception in a way, right? You're talking about literally layering maybe multiple content videos before you go in for the sale. Practically, is that just a matter of, of just creating retargeting pools where you're saying anyone who's watched this video and this video, like how do you layer on sequential targeting on Facebook ads? Right? Now? What are some of the best tactics for that? So it can, be a, it can be a combination of things. So if I'm in the Facebook audience tool and I'm creating an audience, I'm going to click on engagement and then I'm going to go to video first because I can create an individual audience for a threshold watch of the video for three seconds, 10 seconds, 25%, 50%, 75%, 95%. 90%. And I can do that for one video or I can do that for many videos. So as an example, if I have three different videos that I'm using for my cold audience attraction, I can just lump them all into one list if I wanted to. And then on, on a ad set level, when I'm using my targeting objectives, I'm gonna target the audience of the people who watch that cold video that attracts my cold traffic with whatever my next video might be in my sequence. And then the people who watch that specific video, they'll have an opportunity to see the third video. And then also the timing here matters. So as an example, the bidding, as in if you put a manual bid, a really high manual bid on your content, and you do what Tim talks about, an 8 to 12x ratio for whatever your manual bid might be, you can get somebody to go from not knowing you to having the right perspective and then buying your product in hours. Or if it's a longer process, meaning you know from data, a data-driven perspective that you have a longer buying cycle, where you can effectively manage the perception of the individual until it's time to make your call to actions for whatever that amount of time might be. Uh, so it's all completely relative to whatever's being sold, of course, but that truly, I mean, it can go as fast as you want it to, or it can be dependent upon the person's usage. So all, all of that should be considered, but yeah, it's just audiences and, and include and excludes. <laughs> and content. And this is the this is the next thing I was going to ask about. So we spoke a little bit about what makes quality content. You know, I've been producing content for for a couple of years now with this podcast. We're, we're building our audience slowly, um, but we haven't hit anything that's that's gotten really viral yet, except for maybe that Illuminati picture with Tim and I. Uh, that, that one that one went pretty viral there. But uh, other than that, so, so talk, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the kind of content that you need to create. Uh, that has that chance to be shared and engaged with? Like, what, what, are you, what are you aiming to do with that content? Yeah, so we want our content to be polarizing. So we really want to make sure that we drive an emotional state in somebody where they want to take an action, okay? When, when, think about this. When you're in pain, you're more driven to take an action. When you're in an extreme excitement or joy or just you feel happy or maybe you, maybe you get done drinking coffee in the morning or whatever you do for energy. You know, my point is, we desire to be in certain emotional states to take an action, even if those emotional states are on a micro or macro level. So to be clear, if we have a polarizing piece of content, most people, they have absolute shit content. You know, they don't, 
uh, they ask general questions when they write their captions and expect people to comment back. Uh, they literally tell people to share it, you know, or they, uh, in their content itself, they have like five to 10 second intros of their brand logo. And people don't give a shit about that. You know, they're on the average, the average threshold of time that's given to each post on the newsfeed. I learned this from Brian Mert, the owner of Amber advertisement is a total of 1.8 seconds. So we find that content that either rapidly flashes every 1.5 seconds or so and has an audio voiceover to it, that's highly effective. But when I say polarizing content, I mean people want to be clear. People want to agree with something or they want to disagree with something to confirm who they are and what they are. That They want to identify with something, but they need to be in an emotional state that drives them to agree or disagree. Otherwise, they could see something and just be like, huh, yeah, that, yeah that's cool. But if they're, uh, once again, if a polarizing statement comes, let's say that I believe that uh, having a home is an asset, okay? Let's say I believe that buying a home is an asset. Uh, I'm, I market with Onyx Tingal and Robert Kiyosaki through Onyx, and, you know, having the Rich Dad Poor Dad brand to market, you have some, high, you have some highly polarizing statements that you can use. Anytime we ever tell people uh, that buying a home is a liability and the costs that come with that and we compare it to renting, People who rent come onto the post and agree. People who bought disagree, and they both explain and confirm their bias for why they also see it that way in the yeah, way they understand the world to be. Everybody has their own internal model. If you just kind of throw statements out there that create agreement or disagreement, and once again, they drive somebody to be in a particular emotion, uh, that's where they're going to have a higher engagement rate than normal. Uh, but yeah, to be clear, I mean, high production, it's like invest in nice cameras. Uh, advice, invest in the staff behind the scenes to edit the content the right way. And more importantly than anything, just go towards the people who already have large brands, large engagement rates, and just repeat successful actions. Don't, don't try to recreate the wheel. Uh, Jeremy, see, what, you, see what's already working. Do you ever, yeah, I, I remember seeing Dan, when, a Dan Locke video for the first time, you know, probably one of yours six months ago. And, and there was something about his, you know, he's, he's a harsh guy. I think that's what it was. It was that it was that willingness to come in and be like, "Hey, you're lazy, you're fat. I won't, I won't try the accent, but yeah. it all it all sort of like <laughs> this sort of confrontational attitude. It's sort of like that, like a Gordon Ramsay in a way, yeah. right? Like he's, he's not he's not going to suffer fools, and he's not here to to you know give you excuses or anything like that. that exactly. The whole his whole persona must be fun to work with. It is, uh, and keep in mind, it's it's also great to market because he's probably one of the only clients that gets implementing psychological principles at scale. Okay. So working with Dan has been one of the funnest things for me. Uh, when I came into his business, he was doing around $500,000 a month. We scaled up to over $2.5 million a month. I came in in late April, early May. Um, of course, big, big help of a team. Once again, there's a lot of key players in, in the company that are doing all the different things to, to contribute to the system itself. But uh, Dan himself, extremely smart guy and correct. He, he plays a character. So if you're a personality brand, it's very important to remember Dan, if you meet him in real life is the same way you're going to see him in his content. Uh, that's his personality. But to be clear, he's confident and certain in who he is, and he knows that's authentic. And so he's able to put that out there in the world at scale. A lot of people have internal limiting beliefs that they don't they don't recognize are what's holding them back from being who they truly are on the internet and scaling that to get a lot of attention. Um, you, you find that as you spend more money on scaling your content, usually, and this isn't a projection, this is an observation from working with several personality brands and businesses in my time, uh, the person who is the character uh, they truly have to be somebody who's constantly acknowledging that different principles of who they are are going to be put out there at scale. Different beliefs they have are going to be put out there at scale. People will disagree with them at scale. People will agree with them at scale. And a lot of people have an issue with that. So that can hold people back on being their true self and content. But Dan's very confident in who, who he is, what he is, and what he knows. So that helps a lot. That's very interesting. So you know, a lot of people come into Vegas in this show. There's just going to be a lot of marketers. There's going to be affiliates. There's going to be people building agencies. There's going to be a lot of e-commerce people as well, because the second day, of course, is, is very e-commerce focused. Nice. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Obviously, these tactics can be used for any sort of, especially like lead generation, okay. anything, anything with e-commerce. All of this stuff is going to be applicable, this aspect of storytelling. That that's clear. But well, I wanted to just get your take on where the personality marketing space is right now. Like, there's, it's, it's a really interesting. It's like everyone in the world could have something to teach potentially. So I, I, I don't think it's saturated to that extent. But that being said, there's still a new information person pointing to a bridge or talking from a Bentley or, or doing one of these things every day. There's a new one that I see. Talk a little bit about where you see this industry going. Yeah. So authenticity and and the character itself that's teaching. You know, for example, 
uh, there's a lot of people who teach the same thing. And what gravitates students towards the different personality types out there are just who the person is that they're learning from. Uh, does this person share common? It's the same thing in real life. You know, why are you friends with certain people and not friends with others? Uh, even though that both of those people, one that you're friends with and one that you're not friends with, might like the same things, do the same things, have the same hobbies, et cetera. It's because we're attracted to different personality types or, or we're not attracted to other personality types. So there's not there's not going to be a time where it becomes saturated. Um, and even better than that, just to, just to further my point, uh, back in the day, okay, for centuries, not not for a few years, for centuries, how did people learn? Maybe the library or, you know, like or apprenticeship and mentors. Yeah, that was it. You would, you would go to a master. OK, if I if I wanted to learn how to make a sword or if I wanted to learn how to how to build a home and become a mason, oh, if I wanted to learn anything, yeah. I wouldn't go. to. There's no school for that shit back in the day. OK, you're in, you're in a village of like maybe 10 people or 50 people, hundreds of people. Imagine the Wild West. OK, if I want to learn a concept, there's not a place where I can go and get indoctrinated for you know, my, my fifth grade all the way up to my high school career level, just learning the same things as everybody else is in the same country. You know, this is a new system. I want to be clear, like everything that we're doing in modern times for education is, is literally brand fucking new. If you go back and you actually look at when the education system was created, not to, not to bring up Rockefeller, but you know, since you, since you plugged the Illuminati already, uh, the education system itself was created to stimulate an economy of factory workers and very labor intensive driven skills. It was, yes, not, it was not created for empowering people mentally and making them understand that entrepreneurship is a possibility. I had a 16 year old the other day that walked up to me at this event I spoke at and he was like, dude, I made a million dollars last year and you know, I'm just having trouble focusing. Like, what should I do? And I think in my head, I'm like, dude, there's, there's doctors that are getting paid 200 K 250 K a year. You know, how, how did you learn that? Did you learn that stuff in school? You know, of course not. The guy learns it from taking courses from at, from answering and asking mentors. So to be very direct, uh, you know, a personality brand, it's tough to be able to, just like school, get results for people when you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of students. So there's not going to be a point of saturation because what will happen with education is we will go back to what it's already been, which is masters and, uh, and apprenticeships rather than these large sum education games where we're just putting people in classrooms in bulk and expecting them to learn these, these concepts and principles out there. So to be clear, um, you know, everybody who knows something is actually certain about it. They're gonna have an opportunity to transition that knowledge to somebody, but if they're paid for it, you know they can they can monetize that at scale and really duplicate and digitize that action nowadays, especially with the internet. Um, and that's that's the power of why personality branding is going to continue becoming more effective, is because there's so much scale potential on the internet rather than back in the day, as I talked about, where everything was so you know limited and tight knit and, and you couldn't communicate around. <laughs> And because things, this is what I love about the people that that have that that, that come speak at these shows. You're, what are you? You're 24. Yeah, 24. Yeah. You're 24. Okay, yeah, you're 24. Yeah, and just all these people, and it's like they've all become experts through a mentor process, and but also through trial and error themselves. 100. And and that's what I love is like everyone can develop their own expertise. You take in a little bit from there. You take a little bit in from there. And, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm a pioneer. Like I'm a total pioneer in this space with what I've just done because, Absolutely. because Facebook's rolling out new things that, that could that you can learn to master, like, you know, every quarter kind of thing. And then, yeah, and so I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, because it's like, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of people, the instant reaction would be like, oh, there's a lot of gurus out there. Oh, there's a lot of personalities out there, yep. but it's just beginning, as you say, this Absolutely. form of like democratization or digitalization of education is just beginning. A hundred percent, you know, as, yeah. as I described, just being attracted to one personality type and not being attracted to another will always lead to additional opportunities for people to continue expanding and growing and scaling their personal brands. Uh, we're, we're decades away from any kind of issues like that. And in actuality, with more technology becoming available to us and with, with it being easier for us to digitize ourselves nowadays, there'll probably be a time in maybe 10, 20 years where the window will slim comparatively to the opportunity that there is now. Uh, but to be clear, you know, every day there's new people that are just becoming certain on what they know and whether they're a teacher that has thousands of students or they just got their first student and they're teaching somebody. It doesn't matter because the point of it is not profits. The point of it is helping people and just really making people more aware and bringing more skills into others' lives, which every, I mean, we need to do that right now considering the shifts that are happening across all industries. So think about this. We're in an echo chamber. You know, An echo chamber by just pure principle is people participating in one given community, whether they can see how big that is or not. 
it's just one given community that we're all participating in right now. Everybody watching this video, you're you're deep in the game. Like you're deep in the echo chamber because you know you're already learning these advanced and intermediate tips. And for you to even understand the first part of this conversation, you have to have such a foundation of knowledge already. But consider this. There are still like 99% of the entire world is still not making money actively on the internet. They don't have digital skills. Um, so to be clear, <laughs> we're in such a small echo chamber, we can't confuse ourselves and think that we've already hit anywhere near the cap or the potential. You know, there'll be a time where the majority becomes digital, right? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and a lot of people, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too. Like Tim says, I've been in the industry for 13 years and I, I think I know I know a fuck ton of stuff, yep. <laughs> but but, I, but sometimes I feel there's a certainty that I, it's 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 I, and you, you sort of pinpointed it there, saying you know the stuff that you know you're certain about. Yep. What, what what what's a process by which it's almost like a it, it goes back to a bit of those like psychological uh, you know mindset things of of real like how do people help themselves become more certain that they are certain of things? Well, if I if I've never done what it is that I know. I'm not going to be as certain about it because I know it, but I haven't validated that knowledge. Okay. So the process of validating the knowledge that we have is what breeds certainty. You can be confident about something, but you can't be certain about something unless you validated that knowledge. And there's, there's several different ways to do that. Uh, one thing I've picked up from Robert Kiyosaki, he put out this, uh, he called it the cone of learning and it, and it showed the passive learning mediums and the active learning mediums and the probability of us retaining it. Uh, from choosing one route or another for learning things. For example, reading, you have a 10% probability of retaining information. Although I read two to three hours a day, I mean, still, uh, you know, other, others will have higher probabilities. If you turn around and then teach that information, or if you simply teach yourself. So as an example, especially nowadays with all the digital skills that we're picking up, uh, all the new things that can be learned, you know, immediately go and validate the skill. Get a client that you can do it with. Try it on your own brands and companies. Uh, more importantly than anything else to kind of hack the process, leverage the power of community to talk to other people that have already done it, to continue feeding yourself with data to validate what you know. So validating data can be done in many ways. It can be done with your own hands and it can be done by practically putting things to use. But in addition to that, it can be communicated and with somebody else validating the reality that you're trying to make sense of, you know, all of, all of a sudden you're at a level of certainty that you wouldn't have been able to do without that. So that, that can really, that can really hack that process, but it's definitely, it's definitely multiple steps. You know, it's not just, I, I know something now and now I'm just all of a sudden going to be certain and confident about it. It's validating what we know that makes certainty possible. That's very cool. All right. Well, I think that's a really good uh, background on, on who you are and what you're about. I don't know if Tim wants to pop back in here, but I'm, I wanted to know even just just even a little more nutshell for us. What will you be bringing to the table at uh, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live in Las Vegas? Yeah, so I'm excited. So as I said, I did over eighty million dollars over the last three years, and uh, this, is, this is net returns. By the way, we've done a lot more gross, but I don't want to talk about gross numbers. I want to talk about what we what we made, right? What we put in the pockets of our clients. So long story short, scaled personality branding, uh, monetizing your personal brand at scale how even if you don't have your personal brand built and you're just getting content created, you're going to be able to use these principles. Uh, in addition to that, what we're going to talk about, the actual tactics and strategies, these can be used across any industry. So if you have an e-com store, I just had one of my students who went through my creating info products to sell program and this kid's doing a thousand dollars a day in an e-com store with stuff that didn't even relate to his industry actively for what I was talking about anyway in the video. <laughs> so long story short, uh, yeah, I just, I know a lot. I'm still an operator myself doing ads. As I said, we spend a million a month. I personally manage that with only one other digital marketer and I do the majority. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be practicing, passing off a lot of practical tips. I'm going to make you guys some more cash. <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome, man. So uh, just talking about the event, you guys, as you know, it's, uh, this is the last day for early bird prices. Uh, the last day to save $200. The price is going to march up every week after this. So if you're just waiting, uh, don't just, just get the tickets early. You're getting an insane value right now. You still have another couple hours also to grab the mastermind dinner or the speaker's dinner uh, for 50% off. Uh, yeah, which so much is, value from doing things like that in the past. That that helped when I was like 2021, 20, get me connections that I would never have if I didn't do things like that. But think about it. You're either going to buy clothes, sunglasses, shoes, you know, some, some bullshit on Cyber Monday. Or you're going to invest into yourself, the greatest asset you have that's made the money to do all the other things you like to do. Yeah. <laughs> You know, just just basically that, like, eight, four, 12 people who have all succeeded in a massive way will probably answer your Facebook messages. You know, after after hanging out, after spending a night, having some drinks, and it's it, it, you know, one of those messages, one of those meetings could you know could could make it all worth your while. So the fact that you can get 
two full days of training and the, the speaker's dinner uh, for, you know, like a thousand bucks, under a thousand bucks right now. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good way to spend, spend some money if you're in this echo chamber, I would say. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> nice, man. Are, do you know any of the other speakers? I wanted to get your perspective. Do you know any of the other speakers that we're bringing to the table? Do you know like Jordan Menard or uh, are, are you sort of just, are you in your world? Like, are, are you, are I'm you connected to a few of the different speakers that are coming in? I, you know, conversated with them here and there, saw them at other events, met them, spoke, spoke with them, been on a panel with a few guys, but I'm, I'm really excited to see everybody. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Tim, obviously, right? Meet some, meet some new faces. Yeah. Last time I saw Tim, we were at, we were at Nobu in, uh, in Los Angeles in, uh, not, the, not the one in Malibu, but the one actually in LA and yeah, we're drinking sake. <laughs> nice. Uh, we still got a lot on here. I just, we've got 40 people on here. If anyone has any questions, uh, for Jeremy, we'll just turn it over and see if, uh, if anyone has, has anything. We have Alex Brown who's commented and I'll quickly just give a shout out. Alex Brown is with DFO and he's talking about something um, that I'm super excited for because I came up in the affiliate marketing space, as Tim said, we used to do a lot of direct site buys. I, I remember doing a buy over Christmas where I bought the Yahoo Mail Monster, which was the, the giant unit, that display unit that would show after um, you send an email in Yahoo and we did, the, we, we did like a full site lockup, like a you know five figure, big, big buy over, over a month, it might've been six figures. Uh, and, and, and so he's talking about these older school tactics of like site buying, buying on sites for e-commerce products. And I think, you know, in the environment of Facebook's rising costs and Facebook's outages and things like this, just anyone who can, who can kind of come in and talk about, uh, other whole kinds of media buying that aren't dependent on Facebook's algorithms. I'm really excited. Yeah, Alex Brown from uh, Dollar Beard Club? No, Alex Brown. So it's funny. There's, we have several Alex Browns. Alex Brown from Dollar Beard Club is speaking in Bangkok. No, and hey, I'm very tell, tell myself what's that. up when you see him. <laughs> did you did you go to uh, have you been to Baby Bathwater? No, I'm I'm very familiar with it though. One of my buddies, uh, Tom Pfeiffer, he he goes at, you know twice a year when they throw it. Uh, but I actually met Alex. At, so they had a mastermind in the Hollywood Hills. Uh, it was called Unconscious Content, and I don't know if it was a one time thing or what. I would go to it every time. It was a 10k mastermind. I was um, I think I just turned 22 at the time, and. I mean, honestly, it changed my life. It gave me some of the best connections ever. In addition to that, I learned so, I learned so much from those guys. And uh, yeah, Alex, obviously being one of the founders, um, he was also presenting there and uh, just giving a lot of good practical value. But yeah, those guys, those guys are so cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really excited. Alex is, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be in Bangkok coming up here. We're, I, we fly in just a couple of days here. We fly in, in five days. Uh, so I'm super excited for, for that trip as always. Uh, so yeah, guys, you have a couple more hours here to grab the, the half price speakers dinners. Uh, you have a couple more hours to grab the, the tickets at this incredible low price. Uh, I think Black Stri Tim's Black Friday sales are still going on. Our Black Friday sales are still going on uh, at isectrading.com. But uh, we're super psyched. We're going to do a series of these interviews. We're going to basically have um, all of the, the rest of the speakers on over the next little while to, to give you some, some fresh info. Uh, and give you an expectation of, of what you're gonna what what, you, what you're gonna get in their presentations in in, in Las Vegas. But yeah, I'm super psyched. And I think this is the first real talk I've actually had with uh, with Jeremy. Tim introduced me and just said uh, he, 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 Tim was just like, yeah, he's in. He's in. I heard him talk. He's in. Yeah, I heard him present. The guy's just he's on it. So it's really cool to, to uh, connect with you today. And uh, we'll throw this out on the podcast as well. If you can share it to your groups, be fantastic. Yeah, long, I, one one thing. If everybody wants to stay connected with me, uh, my Instagram is at Jeremy. So it's just my name, J E R E M Y. And uh, well, that's a good find. I got I got to give a shout out to Brandon Hampton on that one. <laughs> you just locked it down early. You know, I was at the W. Um, I was drinking some Ciroc Apple with Sprite with Brandon, and I had asked him because if you guys don't know Brandon Hampton, Dan Fleischman, there's big influencer guys uh, responsible for for a lot of the industry behind the scenes and. Um, just, you know, great guys, mentors to me. And long story short, <laughs> I'm sitting here with Brandon and I look on Instagram at the person who had Jeremy and it was like a dead account, at like maybe 10 so followers. You could tell somebody was just squatting on it. And I just, I had asked Brandon and I was like, Hey, uh, is, like, is this possible to get this somehow? And he was like, yeah, they posted ever. I was like, no. And he's like, uh, like, do they, do they have any kind of activity? I was like, no. He goes, all right. Yeah. What, what's your current Instagram? And, you know, I told him what my, what my old Instagram handle was. And I woke up the next morning and I was at Jeremy. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> wow. That's pretty wow. Cool. Like I said, big, big shout out to Brandon. <laughs> 
Yeah, man, that's that's quite a find. Well, congrats on that. Guys, you'll see us in Bangkok. It's going to be our sorry. You'll see some of us in Bangkok. You'll see the rest of us in Las Vegas. If you can't catch us, catch us over there. Great and place, uh, the yeah, <laughs> Bangkok. Oh, yeah, both of them. Both of them. Yeah, no, we only go to great cities Barcelona, Bangkok. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have San Diego coming up in the next little while. So, anyways, guys, Jeremy, I want to thank you so much for your time today. You. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the new year. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time, Eric. See you guys soon. Okay. Peace.